We're live now, Amy. Oh, thank you so much, Nancy. Good morning, everybody. We are so grateful to be here with you this morning. Blessings, blessings, friends. I'm pulling up my phone right here like I do every weekend so I can find us and find you on our Facebook um, page where we go live and I can see you here logging in with us. So good morning. Thank you for joining us this morning um, as you enter this sacred space with us. I just invite you to take that inward breath of the spirit and just allow, allow openness and okay. Hello, everybody who's logging on. If you are logging on, leave us a comment or a heart or a thumbs up or something in the comments, then I can see that you're here. I see the numbers when you pop on, but I don't necessarily see your, your name or your face until you make a comment. So that's why I'm always kind of nudging and encouraging those comments because then I get to see you and I love that part. Uh, good morning, everybody. Blessings, blessings. It was so splendid to see you at the concert um, in the park yesterday. Wow. It's such mm -hmm. a joy to be together again. And I, I just, I don't know if you can tell those of you there, but I'm like on cloud nine the whole time we're there. And, you know, then John's like, Amy, do you want to come say something on the mic? And I'm like, I, I don't even know. I just love you. I just, I'm just like in a daze. I'm so excited to be there with everybody. So um, what a joy, what a joy that was. And John and his band were are, um, just truly in such harmony and, and bring us such a beautiful afternoon in the park. So come join us. We will be there every month on the second Saturday at 1230. So come on down, bring your fur babies. There were plenty of dogs there yesterday. <laughs> it was pretty cute. <laughs> uh, so good morning. Good morning, Paris. I see you logging in. Who else is here? Let me know. So we're discussing that before the concert starts at 1230, um, gathering beforehand at 11 for a uh, spiritual message and uh, perhaps I'll lead a meditation or something like that. So if you would be interested in that and like to participate before the concert starts at 1230, let me know. Um, because if there's enough interest, we'll definitely um, start a little, you know, start a little early and, and add, incorporate that into the, the day, into the second Saturday. Good morning, David. Yes, it was such a good day at the park yesterday. Good morning, Luinda. Good morning, Karen. Woo, everybody's logging in. We're so glad that you're here. My name is Amy Van Ling, and I am the spiritual director here at this incredibly vibrant Brentwood Inspired Living Center. Um, if you're visiting us for the first time, we're so glad that you found us. We welcome you in. Uh, we love you. We're a community of souls journeying together to expand love in this splendid world we live in. Um, and we're grateful that you're here. This is a space of consciousness where we radiate and vibrate at a frequency of love and higher. And we honor the many names and uh, many paths to the one spirit that connects us all. And we offer a variety of voices and we're pretty excited about that because that makes us really unique. Um, and we love to share our message of wisdom and love. Our purpose is really to be a safe environment for all people to explore their spiritual path. Uh, come here and, and soak in the inspiration and the insight and wisdom, and then bring it out to the world and people around them that they touch. So thank you for joining us today in our mission uh, to elevate uh, love. We're grateful. Good morning, Paris. She says, bless. Good morning, my friends. Yes. Good morning, everybody. We are so grateful to be joining mm -hmm. together. Let me know that you're here. I see you logging on. Christopher, Beverly B, Nancy and I, we welcome you into the sacred space. We have our dear friend Christopher Brown back with us. He's an amazing human being sharing the message of forgiveness today. And we might be in for a treat. So we're just so truly full of gratitude for the heart-centered authentic message you bring to us every time you're here. We're blessed to share time. Christopher's message today is to forgive or not. Hmm. <laughs> We're ready. So there was a workshop plan, but we are going to just save that for another time, uh, perhaps when we're um, in person or, or another time. I cannot be on the workshop today. I'm going to be on the plane flying back to San Diego. So the link will be open, though, for anybody who wants to join together and come together for our community connection. Um, but our workshop will 
will be postponed uh, today. So good morning, Jim and Siggy. Yes, another lovely day in heaven. <laughs> I love that. Thank you. Thank you. We have Beverly B with us. She is another incredible person sharing amazing love on this planet Earth. She's with us for the first time. She's zooming in from Hawaii. She's an outstanding musician. Uh, someone else I discovered on that app, Clubhouse, that I keep talking about. <laughs> She holds a beautiful space of love and healing um, every night on that app. It's just what an amazing commitment. She calls it the ancient sound healing room. And the first time I ever heard her, I just, I just tuned right in. She's beautiful. She's so genuine, heart centered. She shares spontaneous music that the universe just downloads through her. And you'll see what a beautiful soul she is. And we're just so, so excited to have you here with us this morning, Beverly B. Thank you. Thank you for saying yes. We're grateful. So grateful. Thank you. And we have our wonderful Nancy Pimentel. She's sharing our selected inspirational story this morning, which uh, is typically connected with our theme for the month, which is forgiveness. Um, and, and that's what we'll be hearing today and our prayer of plentitude. Nancy is a tremendous joy bringer and love bearer. Thank you for being with us this morning, Nancy. We love and appreciate you. Thank you all for being here, sharing your hearts this morning. Um, you know, we all come together collectively to activate this space. You know, it is a space in consciousness. So we don't necessarily have to be together physically for that. So thank you all for, for jumping on here with us. I see you. Hi, Randy. Thank you for taking pictures yesterday. I, I look forward to seeing them. Hi, Beverly. We have another Beverly. I told Beverly at the concert yesterday, tune in tomorrow morning. We have another Beverly. <laughs> uh, Jan says, welcome to our sacred community. Beverly B, so grateful to hear what you're bringing uh, just for us today. I know it's so exciting. Hi, Pat. Good morning. Pat's still in Oregon. Florence is here. Yay. Hi, Maria. Good morning. Nice to see you. Hi, Ronnie. Oh, I got to scroll back. I missed them. Good morning, Dennis. Howdy. Howdy, howdy. Dave says, good morning, lovely community. Julie and Dave are here. Wonderful. Thank you. Good morning, bright ones. We are so glad to be together. Our theme for the month of June is forgiveness. If you're in our connection group, uh, if you're not, just join it. Um, I've been posting some forgiveness posts each day. And you know, it's incredible how one short little quote about forgiveness can be so impactful. <laughs> so join us there. We are also meeting at 10 a.m. on Fridays and 7 p.m. on Mondays for our uh, time of holding space and energizing um, our expansion project. So join us. You can find more info about that on our website, brentlandilc.org. We also have a prayer and healing page on our website. If you or anyone you know would like life affirming, love affirming prayer, please submit a, a prayer request uh, right there through our prayer and healing page. It's pretty easy. Just click it, fill it out and hit send. And <clears throat> excuse me, we, we receive it and we love it. We uh, pray our prayer team prays over those for seven days. So we hold them in our heart. Hi, Debbie. Good morning. Good morning, Tracy. Nice to see you. Yay, everybody's logging on. Uh, what else am I reminding? Oh, we have loaves and fishes. Um, it's this week, right, Nancy? Wednesday, Wednesday the 16th, 1030 at the Sand Creek parking lot. So this is a collection of non-perishable food items um, and anything you've saved to recycle, uh, aluminum cans, plastic bottles, that type of thing. Nancy and Florence will be there. They, I call them the dynamic duo, and they are... Um, just amazing heart-led angels who, who continue this service. So thank you, thank you. So we will go ahead and get started with our mission statement. So I invite you to put energy into it, put your, uh, hold your hand on your heart, whatever you do to, to activate this space within you. We are an open, heart-centered, spiritual community honoring the one presence within us. We welcome all to connect grow and expand in wisdom, compassion, and love. Thank you. Thank you all for being here with us. I'm going to hand the screen over to Nancy now for our inspirational reading this morning. Thank you so much, Nancy. It wouldn't unmute. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Our reading today is from the Book of Awakening, and it's by Mark Nepo called Seeing Through Another's Eyes. 
Now I have no choice but to see with your eyes, so I am not alone. So you are not alone. That's Yanis Ritsos. There is a story of Gandhi that reveals how profound and daring his sense of compassion was. It occurred during one of his famous hunger strikes. A man whose daughter was killed came in anguish, saying to Gandhi that he would stop fighting if the great soul would eat. But Gandhi knew, Gandhi knew that the healing was deeper than just stopping the violence. And so he told the man he would eat only when the tormented father embraced the man who had killed his daughter. It is said that the man collapsed in tears, but did as Gandhi asked, and the larger conflict ended. This is an enormous thing to ask of someone in grief, of someone who has been violated. But beyond the vast courage needed to incorporate this kind of love into our lives, Gandhi's request reveals the irrefutable wisdom that only when the broken are healed, no matter what they have done, will we as a people heal. It's hard to comprehend how this works, yet the mystery of true forgiveness waits in the letting go of our ledgers of injustice and retribution in order to regain the feeling in our heart. And so I am forced to look into my own small life, into my own small and all-consuming pains and ask, who am I? Why can't I forgive the wrongs done me? Why can't I, more than forgive, begin to trust again? Thank you. Thank you so much, Nancy. Appreciate that. Okay, we get to experience Beverly B. I'm going to hand the screen over to Beverly. Thank you so much.
Oh, I was lost. <laughs> I'm coming back. <laughs> oh, that, you know, Beverly sent me a message yesterday. She says, okay, great. You know, I'll, I'll be there. I'll be doing the two songs and whatever your community needs, the universe will just send through me. And um, I love that. I just so love and appreciate that. And, you know, that was one of the, <clears throat> excuse me, that was one of the things that attracted me to Beverly so much was that um, we would be in the clubhouse room and she'll, she'd say something like, you know, there's somebody in this room that's experiencing, you know, something this or that, and this is your song, you know, and um, so receive, receive from her right now, because this is such incredible sound healing happening. So thank you. Thank you. And my voice, I, I said to everybody last month when I was here, uh, this happened to me as well was the Sunday after our concert. I just like losing my voice because I was so excited talking to everybody all day yesterday. So my voice is a little crackly today. But. Okay. I'm going to hand the screen back over to Nancy for our prosperity blessing this morning. Thank you so much, Nancy. Thank you. I invite you to join now for our prosperity blessing. We come together today, opening our hearts and minds to the one spirit, the light, infinite mind, knowing that there is only one power and one life, and that is the life of spirit. We affirm that we are one with spirit, and there is no one, nothing that is separate from this oneness. We are one with that infinite mind that has created all that is. We know that the divine qualities of peace, of power, of plenty, of wisdom are already within each of us, and we embrace those qualities now. We go forth in the truth of who and what we are, saying yes to our prosperity, our harmony, our health, our order, and our love. We affirm that our beloved community's consciousness is expanding beyond our wildest dreams and imaginings. We are dynamically moving and changing with confidence unity, and joy. We step forward with love and anticipation, fully supporting our amazing expansion with our time, talents, and treasures. And with the greatest gratitude, we accept this transformation of consciousness for ourselves and our community. We know that it is done and we give thanks. Now we release, we let go, and we let spirit do its perfect work. We trust the universe to provide for us. It is done, and so it is. And as a reminder, let us continue to stay connected and keep our community alive and prosperous as we expand exponentially. One, please join with your friends and our entire community on Sunday mornings on Facebook Live for our exceptional speakers and musicians coming to us from all over the world. Two, join us on Zoom after our service at 1130 for a workshop or checking in with friends. Three, stay connected by visiting our website, our Facebook page and Facebook connection and read our weekly connection in your email on Wednesdays. Join with others in our weekly small groups for sharing and book discussions. Find the links on our website. This Wednesday is Loaves and Fishes and Recycling Pickup. Please drop off your food and recyclables on June 16th, 1030 to 12 in the Sand Creek parking lot. Our expansion project is on the move. Please join your community in offering a separate and expansive donation, one time or monthly, just for our expansion. Please use PayPal, Zelle, or check and indicate expansion in the notes. Join us on our after service Zoom link every Friday morning at 10 a.m. or every Monday evening at 7 p.m. for our 10 minutes of silent connection as we affirm our expansion project. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy, for all of those wonderful reminders. And if you don't get the weekly connection email, it's really easy to sign up on our website. There's a drop down and, and under connect and it just sign up for weekly connection email. <laughs> so very easy. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to hand the screen back to beautiful Beverly. Lewinda said amazing and such beautiful sound, Beverly. And that is indeed the truth. Feel it, receive it. Thank you, Beverly.
wanted to fade out. <laughs> Yeah, I connected into that forgiveness because uh, that's on my, you know, on my, that's my story. So that's how my gift came through forgiveness. So, yeah. I I feel like saying, say more. <laughs> if you... Well, I, I'll make a very long story, very short, but um, we had a foster baby that ended up being murdered by her, by her bio mom after she was returned to the, the bio parents and we had it for three years and um, I basically had to go through a journey of forgiveness because she that was my daughter of course you know she she was like my child and I had to go through a, to a journey of forgiveness to forgive the mom and I ended up uh, being invited to the funeral after I had not seen her she was um, severely, she ended up in a nursing home for children, basically. It's a long, long story, but I'll keep it very short because, you know, I want to focus on the forgiveness part. So it took me a long time. But um, after, as I went through my forgiveness journey, um, I ended up, after being completely cut off from her and never seeing her again, I ended up being invited to the funeral. And when I stood... When I walked in, the mom was right there and I grabbed her and I held her in my arms. Mm. And you can go on my Instagram, it's actually a picture is on there. And I held her in my arms as she wept. I had already gone through my forgiveness. I had already forgiven her. And I had made reservations to go to Israel before all of this happened. I, you know, I didn't know. When I went to Israel, I just, I was a tourist. So I just was doing all these songs um because i always have my instruments i actually have my ipad with me and either way not realizing that i was leaving sound in israel mm -hmm. and that israel was about to bless me back when i came back to hawaii and so when i came back to hawaii all of a sudden i placed my hands on a piano and that's what you experienced today um so forgiveness is uh huge so basically our baby girl went up you know, and my gift came down. But the only way through that was through forgiveness. That there's no way, that's why I tell people, I'm not sitting here entertaining you. Mm -hmm. There's no entertainment here. This is all, you know, pure love and this is healing. But I'll close with this because I know, uh, you know, there's an amazing, when, when, um, is his name Dan? Dan? Is it Dan? Chris Christopher. Christopher, okay, yeah, he, he, his message, I thought, oh my goodness, but um, was so interesting, it was like, because when I came out with my second album, Ecstasy, which is also a song, like 12, 12 spontaneous melodies, the night before my album came out, I was in another town with my husband, and we went to Walmart, where we never, we never go to that Walmart, and I, and I, there was someone standing there, and I looked at her, and I said, I know you, and it was the mom. And so this is three years later now. So basically the universe did a check on me, like, where is your love? Where's your forgiveness? Because you're about to come out with this other album now that I've given you all these songs, mm -hmm. but are you still walking in that same forgiveness and that same love? So I did the same thing three years later. I grabbed this murderer <laughs> that murdered my child, grabbed her and I held her again. And so then the next day, my album came out so mm. so so the whole world is basically uh you know benefiting you know from and that's why my eyes are closed i can't even really play with my eyes open they're mostly closed because mm -hmm. i don't know anymore how to play with my eyes open because i just go up right away and i just allow you know so so yeah that's my that's the short part of the story well. Uh, thank Beverly. Thank you so much for sh being here and for sharing that story. I, I, I feel it very deeply, very deeply. Thank you. Thank you so You're much welcome. for, for your gift, bringing your gift to us today. I am You're grateful welcome. and I know we are all grateful. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, this is the times when I feel like words, words just don't suffice. So, um, I, pouring my heart and I know that you feel it. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. And so Beverly did mention Instagram and I'm clearing my throat again. <laughs>
<laughs> I talked so much yesterday. I love talking, uh, but I, I feel it today. So uh, Beverly mentioned Instagram. So I know Beverly's on Instagram and I believe Facebook also. I don't yeah, really you, post there. Yeah, I don't really post there that that much anymore. It's just hard Instagram. to keep up. So I know, <laughs> I know. It, it's a crazy with all this stuff, you know, social media. Do you have a website? Oh, I do. Beverlybmusic.com. Okay, so that's another way you can get a hold of Beverly's music. Absolutely. She does have a few CDs, like she mentioned, and um, amazing, amazing sound healing. So, so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, both Beverly and Nancy for your sweet and glorious essence. Uh, the presence that you, you both brought to us this morning is simply divine. Beverly, thank you for being here with us for the first You're time. Welcome. Um, I do know that everyone felt your heart and soul and spirit of healing. <clears throat> it was a delight to spend this, um, time with you. So thank, thank you both. You so we are grateful, grateful, grateful. Mwah. So much love. So much Thank love. You. Thank Bye-bye. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. I feel bathed. I feel bathed. And Christopher, my dear, dear friend, I mm. am always just have this like pin smile when you're here with us. <laughs> Such an authentic soul who touches our soul so deeply with his message um, every time, every single time. So I grabbed my notebook when I left the Bay or left San Diego on Thursday thinking Christopher's um, bio is in there. And so clearly it was a figment of my imagination because, <laughs> and he has a pretty cool bio. So you have to log in next time when he's here and, and hear his cool bio. So for today, I'm going to give you the bits and pieces in my brain that I, that I remember the snippets I know about Christopher. That's not on his bio. His bio is very unique. That's why I always like to read it, but I'm going to tell you some things I, I know about this, uh, truly open hearted, open minded, spectacular soul. So besides all of that, he's led international retreats. He's held a monthly mindfulness heart centered circle in his home for years. And I believe continued over zoom during COVID, uh, just holding a beautiful space for people. Uh, he's a licensed spiritual practitioner. Um, and he has shared his heart around the Bay Area, Oakland Center for Spiritual Living, home of truth with us. And um, well, I was just gonna say with us, I think for five, has it been five years now? My goodness, six years now. Holy moly time, just six years. And we are blessed. Oh my gosh. And he shares it with every soul he comes in contact with. And he's a lovely, lovely human being. And we're just truly blessed to have you as our family, our Brentwood family, you're part of us. So thank you for being here. I'm going to pray us in and then hand it over for this forgiveness message this morning. And Christopher said, buckle in. So I got my seatbelt. <laughs> oh, I invite you to take a deep breath of love and gratitude and allow yourself to move into your heart. We are so deeply grateful to be together, to gather in this sacred space, in this powerful presence of, of God, vibrating with this divine intelligence of the universe, feeling this sweet essence, this sweet energy that we're in now, tuning in, smiling, feeling the joy as we become receptive to divine inspiration and in flow with this divine frequency. We claim dominion over our lives and we know that we are the love, that we shine the Christ light. We are aware that we are each a glorious emanation of God in our own individual expression. Today, we're blessing Christopher. Grateful, so grateful for his spirit. We're creating a space to receive the insights, the inspiration, the divine ideas that he's here to share with us that might spark in us. I release this word for the good and love of all. And so it is. Amen. Ashe. Namaste, beautiful souls. Thank you for being here. I'm handing it over to Christopher Brown this morning. Oh, boy. <laughs> so, um... Good morning, everyone. And um, like Amy says, buckle up, because this is a different take on forgiveness. Um, and I also want to thank Beverly for a beautiful intro. 
uh, into the power of forgiveness. But if let's take the word forgiveness out of the equation, it doesn't make a difference what we call the process, but there is a process involved. And that is the letting go of the idea that it shouldn't have been that way. It's letting go of a past that we're never gonna have. It's we can't return to that time. It's letting go of that dream. We need a different word because what's really at play here is we wanna come back to peace. And Beverly talked about that, coming back to peace and love. And we can't do that when there is this resentment, when there is this um, anger and hate. But we can see now that anger and hate is part of the process. And we're gonna get to that later. So the goal of forgiveness, and I don't like that word. The goal is to return to peace. The goal is what Beverly experienced, which was safe passage through her mind of her, you know, her foster daughter's mom that she could allow safe passage there. And that takes an amazing amount of work. <clears throat> so I know all of you have heard the phrases, kind of the, the catchy phrases, no love without forgiveness, no peace without forgiveness. If you don't forgive, you're only gonna hurt yourself. Forgiveness is a gift that you give to yourself. When, when I hear those, for me, I start to get angry because it seems like it starts to dismiss what's really happening. It dismisses, in a way, the severity of trauma that some people, so many people around the world have experienced. It just dismisses it. Now, let's say you're at, at your favorite Starbucks and they mess up your latte and you get almond milk instead of soy. Well, you know, you can forgive that. That's, that's easy. That's easy to forgive. Someone swoops your parking lot on the way into Starbucks. Well, you can forgive that too. But what about somebody that molests your child or that murders your child, steals your life savings, you know, or puts you in a coma in an abusive situation? What about those? For someone to say, you need to forgive. I want to punch him. It's too raw. It's too angry. It's too upsetting. This is spiritual violence when we try to impose our way of thinking, our limited experience on somebody else. We have no idea what they're going through. Some of the most powerful spiritual words that ever can be spoken is, I don't know. I don't know what you've gone through. I don't know what your mental state is, what your DNA is, what your chemical makeup of your mind is at any given moment, which may cause you to do outrageous things. We need a new word. The word points to kind of like, well, it's okay that you did that. I'm gonna let it go. No, it's not okay. It's not, in some ways, ever forgivable. But do we need to forgive or can we return to peace? And that's the goal of forgiveness, is to return to the path of peace and love. That's the hard work. Okay. <laughs> This is the fun part. Do you forgive the asteroid that crashed into the earth 60 million, 66 million years ago, killed the dinosaurs and 75% of all life on the planet? Do you forgive the asteroid? Okay. How about forgiving the storm that came in and it ruined your wedding and all your decorations, just made a mess out of the whole day? Do you forgive the rain and the storm that came through? How about the forest fire that burned the forest down and killed the animals and also took your house with it and really made a mess of everything? Okay, so 
Is that forgivable? The question is kind of irrelevant. It's nature, it happens. Um, there's nobody to blame. You can blame nature, but you know, it doesn't go anywhere. Humans love to blame somebody. That's what we love to do. It's not my fault, it's somebody else's fault. But it's not satisfying blaming nature. There's nobody there to blame. So it's a dead end. We need to find a human we can blame or ourselves to blame. Okay, now how about we're in, the, <clears throat> we're in Africa looking around at the lions and the zebras. And the hungry lion goes after the zebra and kills her. Who are we rooting for? Who are we forgiving? If the zebra gets away, do we forgive the zebra for outrunning the lion and they're going hungry? It's like, what's, what's going on here? Or is it just nature and it's just life? Do you forgive the lion for killing the zebra, which is their nature? Do you forgive the deer that jumps out <clears throat> and rams you on, the, on a lonely dark road in the middle of the night and lands you in the hospital on your mokes because you were riding your motorcycle? That's what deer do. They become frightened. They run out. So we've got to take a look at what this forgiveness is. It's like, are we separate from nature or do we have instincts just like the lion does, just like the deer does? Do we have that possibility of doing some really stupid things at times, making mistakes? I know none of you have probably made any mistakes in life. I've made a few, but very few. See. <laughs> but you know, we make mistakes and mistakes are actually an important learning process and we don't give them their due. When we make a mistake and misjudgment, we can be really hard on ourselves. And that's not a bad thing because it helps us correct and it helps us learn. The truth is, is we need to learn from every piece, our good stuff and our not so good stuff. And we probably learn better from our mistakes and our most shameful mistakes than we do from our accomplishments. Because mistakes really define our boundaries and where we have gone out of bounds, how we've gone out of harmony, how we have missed something and we have acted in an unconscious way. When people do horrible things, they're acting in a very unconscious way according to the nature at that moment in time. They're on autopilot. There is no free choice. There is no free will. They're, they're just being a lion at that point, attacking the zebra, biting the throat. Is there forgiveness involved? Sure, you know, I'm rooting for the zebra. I'm pissed. <laughs> but at the same time, I can understand the nature of the lion. And I can understand the nature of a murderer at that point in time. Marshall Rosenberg was in prisons and he was talking to the worst of the offenders. And he was trying to understand what would it cause, what would cause someone to murder somebody, to torture them. And he finally got someone to talk about it because for most part, no one would talk about it. It was way too shameful. But this one person opened up and he said, when I see their terror in their eyes, I feel a connection and it's the only way I can feel close to someone. I was terrorized as a child. And Marshall said, you know, that's a terrible way of communicating and connecting with people. That's a horrible strategy. And he says, yes, I know. And it's the only strategy I know. What do we do with something like that? Well, we don't let them out of prison because there's some real confusion there. Can we forgive what he did? No reason to forgive. We need to get back to peace. We need to understand that this, in, in fact, was his nature. Now the nature can change. 
but it was his nature up until now. Chances are when he saw how destructive his strategy was and that there was another strategy possible, perhaps he could change, perhaps not. This is some, this is, thanks for staying with me. This is some heavy stuff. We need a new word for forgiveness. And I'm gonna call it disentanglement. The disentangle from the trauma. How do we release the trauma of the event? And that's a piece of work. That's universal trauma and we've all have trauma in our DNA. It goes back so many lifetimes. And when something bad happens, what happens is it triggers our trauma chain. And boy, oh boy, we become fearful, angry, hateful. And that anger and hatefulness isn't a bad thing. It spurs us into action. You know, when the people of Germany moved on from the Second World War, and I've talked to survivors, they didn't forgive Hitler. It's unforgivable what he did. But they did come to peace. And that's what we need to do. They were able to release the trauma that was inflicted upon them. So we're trying to get to safe passage. I want to use that word again and again, safe passage through the mind. So when that incident comes up, there can be safe passage, which means you don't need to forgive anybody, but you need to release the trauma. Okay. Trying to find my next, here we go. I'm gonna tell a story that's a um, true story. I was in the workshop with Isaac, one of my favorite spiritual teacher. He's a really great friend. And at the end of this uh, two hour session, he said, we have five minutes left. If anybody has something that we can deal with in five minutes, raise their hand. This beautiful 28 year old woman raises her hand and says, yes. And she said, what is it? When I was 18, I was raped by three soldiers in Guatemala. The whole room went solid. Isaac said, are you sure you can do this in five minutes? And she says, if I don't do it now, when am I ever going to do it? He said, beautiful. Okay. You're ready. And she said, yes. She said, look around the room. Do you see those men in this room? And she said, no. Where are those men? Where do they live? And she thought a while and she said, well, they live inside here. They live inside my memory. Okay, who's feeding them? Who's clothing them? Who's keeping them alive? Wow. And she stopped, really, really stopped. And for that first moment, we could feel the whole room start to shift. She says, I am, I am keeping them alive at my own demise, at my own cost, at my own prison and I put myself in to protect me. I am keeping them alive. And Isaac just sat and waited. There was nothing left to say. That's the beginning of the letting go. When we see who is holding on, who is carrying this baggage around. It's not the person that did it. It's how we're responding to it, how we're holding on to it. And if we have no desire to return to peace and to love, then we will continue to hold on to this. And that's the challenge. What's more important, staying in our prison of protection or breaking out of jail? And breaking out of jail can look really, really dangerous because it's a tough world out there. We can be hurt at any moment. But if we don't break out, we will never know love. 
we will never know kindness and peace. So maybe it's time to reset, to reset the way we're looking at things. This is what I call the great wake up, is when we start to see how we, in a way, torture ourselves, how we hold on to our shame, how we hold on to these past, how we hold on to the past as if it was sacred. And we forget what's before us. Shakespeare said, <clears throat> there is neither good nor bad, only thinking makes it so. There is neither good nor bad, only thinking makes it so. My thinking, your thinking, our thinking makes it so. Okay, so here we are. <clears throat> It's a beautiful night. We want to go out onto the lake and look up at the stars and to really commune with nature. So we do that. We hop in the boat, float on out. We're looking up at nature. It's gorgeous. It's really great. And boom, something has hit the boat. Immediately, I'm upset. Something hit the boat. What's going on out there? Who's out in the boat? Who's out there in the, in the middle of the night? You know, ah, ah. So I'm angry. I pop up, I look around. There's the boat. Yep, it rammed right into me. But there's nobody in the boat. It was just an empty boat floating around. Who can I blame? <sighs> so I let it go. I go, oh. And notice how easy it is to let it go. We just let it go. You know, I look at my cat. The cat jumps up on the table and there's newspaper and he misses because there's no table under where the newspaper is and crash, and the, the cat falls down. And the cat just shakes it off and goes, oh, mistake, no problem. We're not in some ways as smart as the animal. We will hold on to, to grudges forever. The cat lets it go. So different scenario, We're out on, I'm out on the lake again. Boom, somebody hits my boat. I'm pissed. I pop up. Oh, and there's a beautiful young woman or young man, depending on <laughs> um, who's in the boat with. And so there, there, there she is. I'll use my, me as an example. There she is. And she's wonderful. And she apologizes and says, I'm so sorry. I was out here looking at the stars and didn't realize I was drifting. And I said, oh, I'm sorry too. I was just drifting here. Then we start this conversation and where did my anger go? Now there's connection. Now there's something beautiful is happening. Okay, another scenario. Here we are, I'm in the boat, bam. I look up, here's this beer drinking redneck. And he's pissed at me for being in his lake because he thought he had the lake all to himself. And now he was going to have an argument with me. Well, now where did my anger go? My anger just went up a notch. So three different scenarios, three different reactions. So is it the bumping of the boat or is it how, what story am I telling? And do I know myself well enough to know and to witness the story that I am telling. Because if I know the story I'm, I'm telling, I could perhaps rewrite the story and get back to peace and release the trauma. You see where I keep going with this? <laughs> okay. Well, now we're going to get to the tough one. And Oh, boy. Let's get back here. I want to bring up the word hate. I want to bring up how powerful the word hate is. And the first thing you're going to say is, well, I don't like the word hate. I, don't, I think it's a horrible word. It's not anger. Hate is a very different word. We hate a lot of things. Like we hate going to the dentist. We hate uh, flossing. We might hate um, the Kardashians. We might hate being, 
having our parking lot, parking space, you know, not having a parking space. Oh, dang, I did it again. Or hate traffic. Hate's not a powerful word. Hate is a word that highlights love. And here, take a look at this. What's it mean? It's an intense and passionate dislike for something or someone. You just don't like it. There's a lot of things you don't like. So let's take a look at the word hate as a constructive way of looking at forgiveness and returning to peace. If you take somebody who is experiences looking at pictures of hate and they put them in an MRI, what lights up in the MRI is two regions of the brain. One is for motion, motivation, action. The other one is for reasoning. The frontal cortex lights up. So you, your reasoning comes online. So actually, hate really engages us. It motivates us to change. It's what got me protesting against for social justice, for starting with the Vietnam War. I hated the war. And it's tricky because hate can turn into anger really quickly. And anger can be very destructive. Hate can be positive because there's something you just don't like. So here's the example. There was a therapist, true story, and she was working at a battered woman's shelter. And she was big on forgiveness. And this one woman <clears throat> came in and she said, well, you know, you're going to have to forgive. And the woman said, no way, sister, <laughs> it ain't going to happen. She said, well, have you tried forgiveness, the stuff that we've recommended for you to do, your affirmations? She said, nope, after one, one day was enough. I got so angry, I couldn't do it. And the therapist, being particularly smart, she said, well, let's try something. She said, why don't you write down what you hate about your husband? Oh, my ex-husband? Sure, I can do that. And so immediately she got all excited. She said, I hate my ex-husband because he molested my child. He stole my savings that I was going to go to college with. And he put me in the hospital twice. And the therapist noticed that something had changed in the woman. She had touched her baggage and she got her chance to really feel her baggage. This is, these are the abuses. She spoke the abuse. This was the beginning of the healing process right there. And then the therapist said, let's take this a step farther. farther. You hate your ex-husband because you love and fill in the bank, blank. And she said, I love my child. I hate my husband because I love education and I love to go in school and to learn new things. I hate my ex-husband because I love my health and my vitality. I love my life. You can feel the difference right there. It's like it, it was really moving. So hate highlighted what she loved. He brought her face to face with the path that she needed to walk. She didn't need to let go of faith. Faith was just pointing the way back to love, back to kindness, back to letting go of the trauma, back to peace, back to that safe passage. Whew. Well, as it turned out, she started practicing writing down what she loved. And that was the key. It wasn't about forgiveness because that was doing her violence. She was going back to the path that she wanted to travel. So if we look back at all of this, what is it that we really want? And that was the beginning question. Do we want to forgive only if it brings us peace? So why don't we just bypass forgiveness because it's such a tough word, at least for me. 
and go to what we want. We want to return to peace. We want to heal the trauma. We want to know love in our hearts. We want to come back to that. Whew. Let's take a breath. <laughs> and lastly, the keys are can we allow differences and uh, with other people? Can we allow ourselves to make mistakes? And can we embrace life as we as as we are as life is? So let us pray. We simply take a breath together, quieting and following it deep into the heart, that blessed sanctuary, and feeling that tender space within. Our forever friend, that friend that loves us and lives us and supports us with every beat. It provides life, energy. As we simply drop into the mystery of this heart, the heart that only wants to love, the heart's only language is love. And from this place of sanctuary and tenderness, I claim and accept that in this very moment, there is no need to improve or to forgive that this very moment is enough. And from the heart's point of view, this moment is pretty cool. <clears throat> For as we live and listen to the heart, we know that the heart has our best interest involved and holds our best interests for it gives us life to do what we do in a very spacious way. The heart does not judge. So today, let us set on a new path, a path of disentangling from our past, a path of disentangling and trusting that we can write a new story, that we can drop and release our trauma and our baggage. And so we move forward with ease and grace on a new path as we reset our path out for love and for tenderness and for connection. We start anew today, this day, and so it is. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Christopher. <clears throat> we get to we get to sit with some really big gems there. Um, I appreciate the new word disentanglement. Uh, recently, when I was writing about forgiveness, that's something that um, that something that came up that I have noticed with myself at in the at times and with others at times that forgiveness can take us right into a place of resistance because a lot of times um people equate forgiveness with sort of like there has to be some reconciliation or okay with and you know you name some horrendous acts and and hitler and things like that it's like you know so i would always say well forgiveness doesn't have to mean you reconcile anything you know but i really love uh, re rewording, you know, to, um, lessen that charge, right. <laughs> with, with that word, because that root word can be very activating. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I like, I appreciate the disentanglement and, and, um, you asked, do you want to stay in a prison of protection or break out of jail? Uh, I, I like that visual. And what about the boat? What about the boat? Is it the bumping of the boat? Or is it the story I'm telling myself about the bumping of the boat? And if it's the story, I can rewrite it and come back to peace. Thank you for that visual. Because I, re I really appreciate you bringing nature into it. Because isn't that the truth? <laughs> right? It's like, well, we can't blame the storm. We can't um, blame the um, weather. So, um, yeah. 
Forgiveness. Okay, let me check in here. Everybody, hello, hello. We're back. Let us know uh, thoughts, questions, um, anything coming up about forgiveness and uh, Christopher's talk. I, I, <laughs> I know there's stuff coming up. <laughs> okay, Karen says, uh, Karen has a question. Christopher, she asks, what can you do if you forgive someone but still don't have any respect for them and don't hate them anymore, but not love them either. <laughs> it's, <clears throat> can you allow them safe passage? It's not about loving them. You know, it's like, I can't get to love. I'm sorry. Um, but I can have, I can afford them safe passage. So if they were to come up as a thought, I wouldn't freak out. I wouldn't go back to my old trauma. Um, so the idea of, you know, for, forgiving and then loving, it's like, I'm sorry, that's way too far. What about returning to peace? Because when I return to peace, then I am capable over time of maybe arriving there or maybe not, but I'm not beating myself up. I'm not pushing, I'm not pushing. And that's, that's the key is that we're so, um, loving with ourselves and not demanding ourselves to do something which is basically a body trauma mm -hmm. um, and it's outside of our will what i didn't say is that forgiveness is a man-made concept mm -hmm. it's not an emotion there is no forgiveness emotion anger is an emotion hates an emotion love is an emotion joy is an emotion Forgiveness is, is man-made. It's like, kind of like a religious type of thing. You know, it's like, Jesus, you're supposed to forgive. And, you know, 70 times 70. It's like, really? Well, maybe that can break the cycle in tribal, um, you know, revenge. Mm. But that's not really what he's saying. It's like, what is it that you really want? He was the master of peace. Mm -hmm. Can we return to peace? And that's, and to love. So that's what's important um, and that you don't need to love your enemy. I'm sorry, um, but you can't afford them um, respect for who they are in some ways, or you can at least allow them safe passage, but you certainly don't need to go to love. Mm, thank you, Christopher. Yeah. I really appreciate that, you know, allow them safe passage. Very um, profound. You know, I, it brings me to uh, St. Francis's prayer, you know, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. You know, it comes down to, yeah. right, peace. Uh, yeah. What else did I jot down? Forgiveness is a man-made, you know, concept. I, you know, in the beginning of your talk, you said, um, you know, a lot of times what comes up with the word forgiveness alone is just dismissing the severity of trauma that someone has experienced or, you know, a collective has experienced. And, you know, I think you're right. And I think that's why initially with the word, a lot of people just have this strong resistance, you know, like, oh, no way. No uh, way. <laughs> yeah. So, so thank you. Uh, Kathy says, um, the most honest and realistic talk on forgiveness I've ever heard. Thank you, Christopher. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very, very impactful. Pat says, uh, love the concept that love is the other half of hate. Yeah. Wasn't that beautiful? What was I jotting down about that? That was really, um, as you said, hate engages us for change and, um, hate pointed the way back to love and safe passage because it's energy, right? We're just, we're talking about energy. So then what do we do with that, that energy? So thank you. Thank you for giving us beautiful descriptions and images today. Uh, Karen said, thank you for answering her question. That made sense. Luinda says, excellent message, Christopher. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything. Joy, love, Christopher, peace. Um, yes. Wow, I needed this affirmation. Great message. Okay. Yay, anybody else? Anybody else have any anything, uh, any questions? I know, you know, it can really just leave us with our, <laughs> with our wheels spinning, right? feeling just really feeling into such a deep message so um beverly says thank you for those useful thoughts christopher yeah 
Yeah. So, so if you think of somebody, you know, somebody who could really benefit from hearing this message, share, share this message out. You know, we're, we, uh, this will go on YouTube, but this is always on our Facebook page too. So you can share it right to your own Facebook page or share it to somebody in messenger. Uh, but yeah, you know, this is how we extend the love is sharing the, such profound, impactful messages like this one. And, you know, coupled with Beverly's sound healing this morning, this is just like such an amazing, you know, video to share out. <laughs> so um, think, you know, who might, who might be um, grateful to hear. So thank you so much, Christopher, for your presence with us and your message. We are deeply, deeply appreciative. So if anybody missed the beginning, um, I let everybody know that we are not going to have a workshop today. We're going to postpone that to a later date, but there is still going to be the connection on the link on our homepage, brentwoodilc.org. There's always our uh, link there on the homepage and anybody who wants to pop in there, connect this morning, feel free to, I won't be on there this morning because I'm getting ready to <laughs> get to Oakland and hop on a plane back to San Diego. Uh, so I won't be there, but but feel free to to grab a snack and and hop on there. I know we have beautiful souls that are always there connecting, and I will um, I will be on our expansion project meditation um, seven p.m. Mondays and ten a.m. Fridays, and that's the same link on our homepage. So drop in there with us. Uh, thank you, Christopher, for being with us, sharing mm. your beautiful, tender, what did you say? The reset, the reset is, is, uh, bringing love, tenderness, and connection. And that's what you brought us this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody. We appreciate, and we love you. We're so grateful for you. If your spirit, your mind, your heart feel touched and nourished by our community, please consider visiting our ways to give page brentwoodilc.org. Our center is 100% supported by your loving, generous contributions. We thank you for your outpouring of love each month. You know, this is what enables us to reach far and wide to inspire and, and bring love and touch hearts and lives. And um, that that's what excites us. <laughs> I love you all. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Luinda. Jan says, uh, that was profound to me. What, what was profound to me was how hate is the force of action, which can lead us to return to peace, right? Yeah, very profound. Yes. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to close us with our prayer of transformation. Send you with a big virtual hug and kisses and love. The light of God surrounds us. I am light. The love of God enfolds us. I am love. The power of God directs us. I am power. The presence of God watches over us. I am presence. Wherever we are, God is and always shall be. And we are divine. You are divine. If you didn't hear that today or this week, I'm telling you, you are divine. You are loved. You are valuable. I am so grateful that you are here. Shine on bright ones. It's a date next week. Same time, same place right here. Mwah. Love you all. Thank you, Christopher. Hugs and hugs and hugs and more hugs. <laughs>